like to yield to the chairwoman of the Western Hemisphere Subcommittee, Maria Salazar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I think it's uh, it's laudable, and um, I congratulate you for for putting this hearing together. And to Mr. Ballard, uh, you were the guy. I, I watched the movie um, three, four years ago, the first cut in Miami, Florida, and uh, you really caused a major impression. Uh, it's a thorn in my back that I've had ever since I learned about this phenomenon that we just do not know about. This movie has put this issue in the forefront and I, we have to thank you. May the Lord pay it back to you in health to your 10 children because this is, it, 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 there are no words to describe and, and I think uh, Chairman Smith and myself, uh, we are committed to do something about it, whatever that is. And to you, Ms. Jean Celestine, thank you for sharing your pain with us. This is Jennifer for, for wanting to help those kids. So um, I have many questions. I know that we're, we're, we're going to be called for votes at any time. But, you know, I introduced a, a, an immigration reform recently, um, the only immigration reform law that has been presented in Congress this cycle. And uh, it's basically an immigration bill. And one of the main topics that I addressed, thanks to the movie, is to impose a minimum penalty of 25 years to those who are convicted of child sex trafficking. That's one thing. The other one is to is to give a better, more rigorous training to the uh, Border Patrol agents in trying to spot where, um, where those child sex traffickers are, it specifically including what you said about that just because they give you a phone number, it's you're, you're, you're giving the child back to the trafficker. We are. The United States of America. What? <laughs> so, um, not only that, taking care of our own agents, but then going to the transnational criminals, the smugglers, the back where it starts, and uh, creating processing centers to to weed out and come to the conclusion whether that's the uncle or the father. So basically, the Dignity Act, I just want you to remember it. I want to work with you because um, we everyone talks about the mess at the border and that we're having all this illegals and fentanyl and everything coming in, but not everyone mentions the child sex traffickers. And unfortunately, no one says either that we're the number one market. So that means that we have, the consumers are here among us that's another that that's uh, no words to describe it in a public hearing of the united states congress so i would like to ask you um what do you think we could do now what's the number one th what's the number one step we could take as legislators to help this issue well one we we passed the secure act which holds accountable the agencies so no longer can they lose the children and no longer could they say, not our problem. Uh, it's devastating to hear that Chairman Smith had to call multiple times and, and he, he heard nothing back from these agencies. The other thing is we need to enforce our border. There's been this, this m myth that somehow it's a mutually exclusive proposition to be for border enforcement and pro-migration. I don't understand that. I'm, ex I, I, I'm very pro both. <laughs> I'm for big. Walls. I know walls are a cuss word these days because somehow this got political. Yeah, it wasn't political, by the wall. way. It's structures and cameras and drones. Uh, it's and it's everything. It's, it's virtual it's technology. Walls. It's technology. Yeah, it's technology. Um, I worked under two different administrations of two different parties uh, on that border, and they all built more of border protection. And no one, everyone was thumbs up about it because it rescues children. Th we have to explain the concept of it forces the flow of movement, children being trafficked or drugs to a single place where dedicated women and men in uniform are trained to identify the child. Why is this so controversial? It's, we use it everywhere we go, museums, amusement parks, concerts, it's okay for everybody else to do it, but all of a sudden it's somehow bad or racist or I don't understand it. We're rescuing children from foreign countries. That's our goal. That's a, uh, for 10 years as, a, as an anti-trafficking operator undercover on that border, that was my goal, to rescue children from foreign countries so they wouldn't get into the hands of our pedophiles. <laughs> um, and so I've never understood. Most of those kids are from Latin America. 
Correct. They belong to my region. They are Latin American kids that are being trafficked into the United States. Correct. So let's give them the hope of one last, one last window opportunity before they're stuck into a, a very dangerous situation so is that port of entry. Give me, give me a, a, an example, a regular example of what happens with that child that is, let's say, stolen from Honduras or from Colombia. Sure. It winds up at our border, and then what happens when they come in into the United States? Okay, so I, I, this is an important point. I learned this from the president of Honduras last week. Uh, these kids are coming, their families are coming through, a lot of them pass through the Darien Gap. And there's, it's a in jungle, Canada. it's horrible. And by the time they get out and, and land in Honduras, the families leave their kids. They can't stand watching their kids suffer anymore. They put them in some kind of a, a very insecure kind of arrangement with a foster situation or something. And that's what makes them so exposed and available, the coyotes and traffickers who say, oh, it's so easy to get them at this point. They bring them up. Oftentimes they'll use these kids once they get there. And, and the abuse is extensive, by the way, on the way up. And once they get there, sometimes they're used as pawns. There's something called the Flores Settlement, which was well-intentioned, but the traffickers are always looking to exploit, even well-intentioned, you know, in this case it was a court decision, uh, a child with a family member must be permitted within 72 hours into the inside the United States. I get that, it sounds great, except they start using these kids as pawns and, ma and pairing up false families, pairing up a child with the clients call this woman mom, call him dad, and you're going to get right in. Well, Border Patrol started noticing the same kids were coming in with different parents. And no DNA testing anymore at, at, at this hour. At the time, uh, they, they, it was implemented. I, I, my understanding was that it was taken away. The ranking member Thompson from the hearing yesterday at, at Homeland Security said it is actually still there, so I'm, I'm investigating what's true about the, But it has to be implemented if it's not. Um, and so then the child, whether they're used as a pawn in that in that strange loophole, uh, you know, eventually at any point during this process, a sponsor can call in or show up, and, and it's it's very and minimal. And picked up by the by the trafficker, and then what happens next? Well, and I'll say this before that it's it's more difficult to adopt a cat from a shelter, in my opinion, than getting a child out of HHS into our country. And then after that, we don't know because they won't pick the phones up. But I'll tell you what, in a country that probably has more pedophiles than any other country in terms of just sheer numbers, based on, I base that on the fact that we consume more child exploitation material than any other country. It's very concerning. There was a case recently where 100 children were sent to the same address by HHS in San, in, uh, in San Antonio, um, or, or Austin, I believe. 100 kids to one address. I don't think that was a well-intentioned sponsor. They're gonna do something with those children, whether it's slave labor, whether it's such sexual exploitation. But here's the problem, now these kids are identityless. They have no, they don't speak the language, they don't have a name, a number, they don't have any way to identify, and they're gone. And so this is our, our responsibility to, 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 to protect these children, just like, the, like we would protect any other the children. The American news media, have they been receptive to your statements? Have they called you to do interviews and put this out there in the no, news? No, no, in fact, in fact they, they, they just like to say things like, Mr. Ballard is wrongheaded thinking that there's any kind of trafficking going on at the border. I mean, the, and the, they, they make a statement like this without backing it up with anything. I don't know why they don't want to have the conversation. These are children. This is, this is not partisan. It shouldn't be partisan. Uh, and and I, don't, I can't figure out why they don't want to talk about These it. These are Latin American kids. They're Latin American children. And that's the reason I left the government, frankly, was because, as, as, as Congressman Smith knows, is because I didn't care. Uh, human trafficking, child trafficking knows no borders and boundaries. Unfortunately, bureaucracies do. And I, I, that's why I left. I couldn't handle the bureaucracy. I couldn't handle the fact that I was told, you can save this kid, but not that kid. And so that's why we, I left, so that I wouldn't have any jurisdictional or bureaucratic limitations. And I wish that our policies conform to that way of thinking as well. Of course. Human, cri human rights is, is across the board. Correct. Not only for some and not for others. Thank you very much. We are we're going to regroup and, and try to, you know, we've created this bill to find where those 85,000 kids are at. Because that, according to what your information, it was in the first 30 days of the Biden administration when the uh, border was more opened. Than in the pre that, that's, that happened during a 30-day period. That's correct. And I, and, I, and I like the idea of streamlining our, our, our immigration laws. Make it easier. I, I want more asylum. I want more immigrants. I, I suggest long term, we can, can we not put our asylum and immigration courts? This may sound like a logistical nightmare, but if we can get those as an attachment to our embassies in these Central American countries, imagine 
you, you de-incentivize the traffickers. You suck the wind out of the sails of their criminal networks and the honest and good people who want and need to come to the United States, make it quick, make it fast. Don't make them take a 3,000 mile journey. Let them go to the embassy and, and get asylum immediately and we can help them with passage. We can, I love this, this idea that, that I just learned about called the uh, Central American Miners Program. How amazing. Let's help these children. They, they, let's, let's help them get safety. Let them have the American dream. I, I agree with that, with that. I'm gonna look into that and, and thank you for, for bringing that up. I didn't know about this. So there's so many things we can do. Thanks to you, sir. You're back. 